Welcome wife. to Kicking It With My Hot Wife. Hey! You're pregnant. <laughs> yeah. How'd that happen? You had told me no limits on the credit card. Next thing I know, I'm here. So the plan was originally like, people are wondering like, oh, did you guys like plan on moving? Like we always wanted to like move to Dubai, but we were like, let's test it out for three, four months. Like I thought there would be more of a culture shock for you, but uh, at the end of the day, I think you're more Arab than me because this man. <laughs> For a Muslim to move to a Muslim country is actually it was way it was easy for me. Yeah. And then, Wait, can you clarify? Are are you Muslim? Yeah, because I, I don't think that. I wish I had one dollar for every time somebody asked that on social media. Yes, I am Muslim. I was Muslim before we even got is it married. Because of me? No, people are crazy. Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome to. Well, we actually don't have a name for this. This is just me, called me and my wife. My wife and I. I like Max it. and May. May and Max. We don't do this often. No, this is the second time we've ever done this. Well, we just but sit. welcome to... We don't have a name. <laughs> we just welcome. Make it up. Have some passion. Hot welcome wife. to Kicking It With My Hot Wife. Hey! My wife. My <laughs> pregnant wife. You're pregnant. <laughs> yeah. How'd that happen? I explained this on my Instagram, but... You know, it was love at first sight for both of us. And then you had told me no limits on the credit card. Next thing I know, I'm here, pregnant, seven, almost seven months. <laughs> Anyways, we just you just announced not too long ago that you, because we kind of kept it a secret. Yeah. You announced at five months. Yeah. Which means, how did you keep, how do we keep that? It actually was hard. It was pretty. It was hard. And then I was, I was starting to show and then people started telling me like, oh, you're showing and I'm like, I got so defensive. <laughs> so I think was just to deny it or ignore it. No, I wouldn't deny it. I don't want to lie. No, not deny it, but like not lie, but I yeah. don't know I'm not a liar. I'm a denier. No, wait. No, I don't <laughs> I don't want to lie about it, but I was avoiding it. We ignored the question. Yeah, because I wasn't ready. But it's crazy. We're here. I feel like with me and you, like our stages in life are just so like fast and naturally fast and crazy like but let's rewind because since this is only our second time that means the first time had to be in north carolina yeah we're not in north carolina yeah we're our first podcast but we're not in north carolina now yeah we're in dubai now that you know we're married we've been married for almost two years come january and the last time you've seen us we were in north carolina at our ranch at our home and then now we're here living in Dubai. And we've been in Dubai, every, I say only a few months, but it's been since March. Yeah. So we've been seven, here. Seven months. Around, yeah, like seven, eight, seven, seven months or so, which is actually pretty surprising, pretty yeah. fast. So the plan was originally like, people are wondering like, oh, did you guys like plan on moving? Like we always wanted to like move to Dubai, but we were like, let's test it out for three, four months. Or three months. And I, don't then, know, I don't know if we always wanted. So my first time coming to Dubai was when... We came on our honeymoon. Yeah. And then kind of was dope. I liked it. But, you know, there's a lot of places you go to that is cool for vacation, right? And then so we came back another time and we came for like work, right? Yeah. And then we stayed a little bit long and then we started having more serious conversations about, okay, well, we should probably entertain the idea of moving here. And I think that was in November of last year, right? It was in November. It was, yeah. It was in November, but I feel like... I don't know how serious you were about it. Yeah. When we booked this March trip, we're going to move. We're planning on moving. Yeah, So, we're, but our plan was to be here for two months. The, yeah, it was to test. I don't know how moving to a place works, but we were like, let's test it out. I don't know what test it out means, but, but like... No, because when you go to a place for vacation, you're usually hitting these highlight places, right? Yeah. And if we stay for like two months, there's no way we're going to go out every night, eat out every night. So now we got to get used to like grocery shopping, like, where's the laundry places? How's the traffic? You know, like, in re where do regular people hang out and not the tourists? And I think that was my idea of, like, let's test it out. And then, obviously, I, through you coming here before us getting married and then me meeting some of your friends, I've met some cool people since I've been here. And then when we came in March, things kind of just clicked. And two months turned into three months and then four months and then six months. And I think about, honestly, I think about three months into it, we were like, I don't think we're going anywhere. Yeah. And so it was kind of like even people back in America, which at this time for me, I had started, people know me as an entrepreneur, real estate person, I started to wind down really, really since COVID, I started to kind of 
not buy as much real estate and kind of hold back. I was still doing like my real estate day to day stuff, but then like I wanted something new. I've been doing this real estate hustle for seven years. I know it doesn't sound like a long time, but I've done it real well in seven years. So I was almost in the place where I was like, let's go try to do something else. Ready for change. And I have other businesses that make me more money than real estate anyways. So it was like, okay, well, let's just go do those things. And then obviously I have a personal brand where that makes money as well. So I was like, let's just, it, it's kind of the right time. So slowly kind of closed down some unnecessary uh, things, made, lost some money in some investments that I didn't foresee moving to Dubai happening. But it is what it is. Even like Tony, we told Tony, we said, come to Dubai with us for two months. And Tony only went He's back. He's been living the life. He only came back to get some luggage <laughs> from America. <laughs> no, but you know what I'm proud of you about? Okay, like for me, I'm already, because I'm Egyptian American, I'm already kind of in the culture, right? Yeah. Like me moving to the Middle East is kind of familiar. Like I've had... Middle Eastern upbringings all my life, like my mom and my dad and going to the mosque and blah, blah, blah. So I just think it was way more of a risk for you. Like originally when I thought about it, I was like, oh my God, we're moving to the Middle East. Like, I don't know. Like, you know what I mean? It's not like, it's not. Yeah, I agree with you, but I thought it was more of a risk for you. Yeah. What? Yeah. What? Wait, why? Because you're so close with your family, like even very, very close that, yeah. see, ever, like I left for the military at 17. Mm. So it's very common that I'm not home. Mm. Like that we don't do holidays and stuff together. So it's very common. Mm. So our relationship, my family relationship doesn't depend on proximity. Your family relationship depends on proximity. Yeah, we're very Like tight. flying to go see you. Even when we just moved to North Carolina, you were like every other weekend you needed to go not every other weekend, but somebody mm -hmm. had to come to North Carolina or you had to go to New York to go see family. So mm -hmm. that was, since you guys are so family tight, that coming over. I think that was a bigger risk for you. For me, it was, as an entrepreneur, I didn't really have that, like, that was the risk part, but not mm -hmm. not anything, like, obscenely to culture. You know what? That's a good point. You really reverse, oh, no, this <laughs> one, maybe I didn't think of that. Oh, you crying? Are you tearing <laughs> no, up? No, I'm not. No, you I'm not. You really reverse. I didn't think of that. It was a bigger risk for me. And I think you should give me more credit in life because, yeah, you're right. You're crying. No, I'm not crying. You're tearing. <laughs> no. That's because no. You, see your, you see your nieces and nephews so often. Oh, my God. What are you? Like, you're horrible. Like, you see me trying to hold it together. No, I'm just explaining to the audience. <laughs> I'm explaining to the audience that you you no. it's part of your weekends where you guys go hang out and stuff like that. And for me, it's normal for me to be on the road. So for me Damn, what is it? Ten minutes in and I'm like, <laughs> I have to edit this. Preg preg pregnant no, hormones? No, no, but it's true, like hot in here, isn't it? A little bit. Sorry. It's, it's this it's the heat. But no, listen, it's true because like I am very tight knit with my family. I see them all the time. And I think like it's cool, like, <clears throat> obviously, like, getting married, leaving the house, and then moving to a different state, and then... Moving across the world. Moving across the world has been a transition for me. Thank God for FaceTime. There's a lot of FaceTime happening. There's a lot of FaceTime happening, but I don't know. I feel like we've also been... Like, we manage, you know? Like, I, I FaceTime them all the time. Your mom My mom. My mom keeps visiting me. <laughs> So yeah, but you know what? Like when I when I think of like culture shock, I I'm what I was trying to say originally before you got into this with me is that um, like I thought there would be more of a culture shock for you, but uh, at the end of the day, I think you're more Arab than me because this man. <laughs> no, I mean I I don't I mean I mean to for a Muslim to move to a Muslim country is actually it was way it was easy for me. Yeah. And then, Wait, can you clarify? Are are you Muslim? Yeah, because question, I, I don't think that... I wish I had one dollar for every time somebody asked that on social media. Um, yes, I am Muslim. I was Muslim before we even got Is it married. Is because of me? No. People are crazy. Um, you know, and I know it's not common, I would say, for Arab Muslims to marry outside their culture, which is whatever that's their own doing, but yeah... I mean, I think what happens is people live inside of a box, right? And I think that no matter where, no matter how much money you have or how well off you are or how unfortunate you are, most people still live in a box. And I think traveling, 
is the, the, the fruit of life that gives you because you can go integrate with other people's cultures and understand the way people do things and not be judgmental about it. Mm. But there's a fact that most people don't know that are Muslims, that only about 19% of, of the Muslim population are Arabs. Yeah. Well, I think, I, I think it's also just like... So seeing... when they see me and they're like, wait, wait, you know, you're, you're a black, African, Jamaican, Muslim? Like, yeah. I think it's just like a lot of people don't see a lot of inter... I don't know. Is it a, a lot of people don't see a lot of interracial relationships? I think in the Arab then, world, yeah. Yeah, and so their families, not just Arabs, I feel like... Yeah, but definitely... I feel like Pakistanis, Indians, there's so many cultures. And yeah, so many, Arab, like, Indian cultures, there's a there's little... You guys are kind of late to the game. That's That struggle with it. There's a lot of like family. I didn't, I, you know what? I never... I never was like, oh my God. I knew like introducing you to the family was going to be sh like shocking, like out of the norm. But I knew like once they liked you, like once you hit the criteria of like this man can but provide and I, protect me, like I didn't think like we would have a culture clashes between our families. I think you mentally thought it was going to be more than it was, but it wasn't other than your mom was like, what? He's Jamaican. Yeah. That was about the extent of... The shock, I think, for like, and then obviously the rest of your family's mad chill, your younger brother, your older brother, your sisters, like, so. I'm just scared of my mom since, I'm scared of my mom since birth. Like, I'm scared to sneeze around her the and wrong way. And she was way. the first one that was like, this is great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Almost too soon. No, but she was, yes, yeah, too soon. She was always your number one fan. But the thing is, uh, she was shocked. I'm not going to act like it was yeah, like yeah, of course. right away. But she was like, what? Jamaican like it was so like she did not expect that from me especially since I was starting content creation and doing a lot of Arab content creation I was in like the comedy scene of like Egyptian American comedy scene in America I don't know so so she didn't expect that and then when I had told her she was like wary and then when she had met you right away she was like this man is serious like because you know you did everything properly you came to the house you knocked on the door you met my dad you... i rang the doorbell no actually i did ring the doorbell wasn't working it doesn't so work I anyway. knocked it doesn't work in queens <laughs> <laughs> so you did it the right way you know what i mean and you had good intentions and my mom saw that you were practicing muslim and you had your priorities together and so what it, what is she going to say no about like and because of that, you became kind of like the question person. So when you sit, like when you share me your DMs, a lot of women ask you, how did you do it? Or how did you convince your family? Or how did you, how did you let, make it happen? And I think you get that question a lot. Yeah. And I don't think so I had... So answer it. Okay. I don't think I had a handbook like this is how it happens. I just think like, alhamdulillah, my family isn't racist. <laughs> We didn't have that. We we're a very educated, traveling family. So it wasn't really, the focus wasn't like, he's not Egyptian. He is not Arab. It wasn't like that. So, you know, my father also works for the United Nations. He's traveled all over the world. For like 30 years. For like 30 years. My mom. Is a school really, teacher in, in was Brooklyn. A, was a school teacher in Brooklyn. So, yeah. Studied German. Like, so I think, I think because of the education level and the diversity and, and your mom traveled, your whole family, matter of fact, your dad's favorite place of vacation is, one of his top places is Jamaica. Yeah. So, so he was it? so happy to tell me that and so happy to <laughs> sing me one of uh, Sean Paul's songs, actually. When he, <laughs> no, he didn't. No, but you remember the Sean Paul, what is he, his one, he said it was one of his favorite songs. Oh, um, not Sean Paul. Who? Bang next door. Oh, uh. Picture this. We were yeah, both yeah, 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 that guy. Okay. okay. Shaggy. Shaggy. Yes. Okay. So I know it was like a surprise, but it wasn't like a, a deterrent and like, oh my God, this is not happening. Yeah. So alhamdulillah, like uh, honestly, my, my family and, and true Islam is is not like that. It's not like it even, it's not you even have permitted. to come from the same it's not, country. To act like that is not even permitted. It's, it's not, not even permitted. So yeah just like i was even surprised it was moving so smoothly if you have the issue just play the quran out loud at the house <laughs> on the weekends certain ch certain chapters are probably more beneficial than the other for your parents to hear i think overall it's it's been a fun journey i think we've done not even married two years we're like a few months away from being married two years yeah and i want to ask you two things sure what is your favorite thing about marriage so far okay and then what is your like what is something you expected about 
moving here? Like, how, how did you expect it was going to go moving here? And then how is it now for you? My favorite thing about being married is I have a, I have that person. Obviously, I'm married to you and I have a person that I can always have a conversation with. That if she crosses me, I can... What? You know. <laughs> no. Like, she, I have, we have full trust, right? So there's no, like, there's no holding back. I think we, we ride it to the end. So I think that's number one. You have, like, a, a partner. Bar, bar, learning, partner. Partner in crime. <laughs> and moving to Dubai. I mean, if you want to elaborate on, like, what your favorite thing is, like, you can continue. I feel like that was a short... No, that's good. I'm good. Um, having, having that true partner. And then moving to Dubai. Let's move on. Let's talk about... What ahead. was my question? What did I expect? What like, was I... what was your expectation of moving here versus, like, how it is for you, reality? It's very advanced. Yeah, Dubai has taught me kind of what you would want a city or a country to run like, a government body to run like. I don't want to get deep, but, like, for example, I'll tell. On the way here, we were at a stoplight. We are three minutes away, and we got rear-ended in the back. Luckily, we have a vehicle that has like a tow hitch. It didn't damage the truck at all for us, but the guy behind us got damaged pre pretty decent. In most places, you would you would you would be frantic, like you would kind of have to wait for the police traffic. Mm -hmm. I said, "Hey, look, let's just move the car to the side. Let's let, let's not impede traffic." I downloaded the Dubai Police app, which I never had in my phone. I signed in with my other app called UAE Pass, which has all my credentials, and then I filed a simple police report in like seven minutes and had the report the moment i hit submit it called the other driver two minutes later i had a link to download the report and we were on our way like i mean i've never seen somebody so excited so <laughs> excited to be in an accident it was i wasn't excited <laughs> to be in an accident like never want to be in anything like that but i was like the the efficiencies that this place has reminds me of if Apple, ha Apple, or you know, one of those big companies that mm -hmm. are very profitable, that had the opportunity to run a city, mm -hmm. like their inefficiencies are built into things that are usually pains in everywhere, and it's because Dubai is like a business. Dubai is truly a place that operates like a business. From, and it's it's the reason why it doesn't have to take tax, you know, income tax from its its residents because it makes profit because runs it like a business. And I, so I think for me, as an entrepreneur, it, moving here, just like, you know, there's a couple books I've been reading about the ruler and just understanding, like, it just, it, it's more of an entrepreneurial, friendly environment. Like it inspired you again? because you... Yeah, it, it inspired me again because I was really coming here to chill and relax. And here I am now about to build 45 villas, which I'm not going to dive into, but you know, it's just like it's it's uh Where where are you building the you're building forty five villas? I'm not where? saying yet. Okay, fine. I'll we'll announce it soon, but anywhere. Don't tell. I'm not. I didn't I just, I'm sneezing. <laughs> Hot in here. So anyways, here's some things that are difficult. Let me ask you a question. Okay. I was waiting. How difficult has it been? as an adult female moving to a new country and finding new friends? Damn. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to go back to like when you said vacationing here versus living here. I think when I would vacation here, I was meeting up with everybody. I was like, hey, what's up? Like even if I knew you through Instagram, I was so open and blah, blah, blah. I think when you mature and you become an adult and you start moving and finding a place and like you prioritize who you spend your time with. Now I'm like, now I'm pregnant and now like there's so much going on. Like this is where I live. Um, I, I've been trying to make friends, but not, I haven't been as social. If that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, a lot has changed for you as well. Too. A lot has changed. There's a lot of changes and I don't know. I don't, I'm very picky and I'm very social, but I'm very picky. Like I can hang out with anybody, but when it comes to like close friends, I'm very, very picky. Yeah. And so I might meet up with somebody once or twice, but I'm not like, I need to be better with investing more in a, in a long-term friend. I think for, I think for guys, it's probably a little bit easier. Um, for me, it was easy. 
like between Abdullah and Orkan, like that's all I needed. Yeah. Like I'm good. Halas. I don't need anything else. Yeah. But you know what? Like I feel like you've had a lot of, for me, I feel like it's very hard for me to find a person that can relate to my lifestyle, like True. in content creation, but also like. I'm 30 now, I'm like at a different, like I can't party, I'm not like going out to social events, like it's just like more chill, more yeah. in depth, so it's like hard to find like that fun content creation world, but also like Sirius takes it as a business and has a business, like that, those two things, it's really hard to find, so yeah. I find myself not socializing as much, but I'm cool. Like I know everybody. I'm not a loser. Like you know what I'm saying. <laughs> if anybody, you didn't wants have much friends in New York, anyways. I didn't have much, and and like my friends are really like my family. It's always that's been my I'm, family. That's what I'm saying. Even from beginning, yeah. You know what? Let's talk about this real quick. Mm. Let's set this straight, uh, because a lot of people don't know that you actually make money. And I'm not going to talk. I know you don't like talking about money, so we won't talk about no numbers. But I don't mind. But you don't like talking about you don't mind talking about my money. But she does it. She hates talking about money. But May makes her own money. It's actually very rare that I spend like money, money on May. Like I do the husband things, obviously. Like I pay for everything. But you know, she has her own money as well. And 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 alhamdulillah, she doesn't. She's not a very materialistic person. Yeah, maybe? like. She doesn't walk around with Louis Vuitton bags yeah. or like I have to force her. I like I'm like, let's go to the store. I'm gonna buy you some real sandals today. And we go buy like <laughs> sandals from, you know, Gucci or whoever, whatever, all Listen. these places because she doesn't care about that stuff. So like I think truly some people sometimes sometimes I read comments all the time because mm -hmm. I, I always get a gauge of like what people are thinking. Some people actually believe that you're like a gold digger. Call me what you want, but you can't call me broke. <laughs> call me whatever you want. <laughs> but listen, no, I think I think when it comes to like designer and stuff, like I've never cared about it. Yeah, me neither. I've never cared about it. Like uh, maybe it's like the way I was raised. I care about gold. Like my mom will always have me dripping in gold, but like I'll have the Egyptian slippers from the market and like regular clothes and like me and my sister share clothes. And like, I don't know, I've never been like, brand brand loyal or brand care about brands and stuff like that yeah like if it feels good if it fits good i'm gonna wear it i don't care yeah. uh, whatever and you know i i've always like like when i started content like I, I grew up in the era of like instagram pics and instagram models and so like i never felt like i fit in that and it was like i don't know we were such a like bubbly family and we we're always making jokes so like you know, I, I always like started off my content being realistic to who I am and and what comes naturally to us and, and me and my family. So, so like I was gonna ask you a question. Like you're obviously very beautiful, right? You're very beautiful. And I'm not just saying that because you're my wife. I'm like literally uh, like you're a very very beautiful person. Thank right? you. Why don't you do more of that beauty uh that type of content? I'm not like anything scandalous, but like Yeah. I know it's why? Why don't you? I think like I love making people laugh. That's like my main pusher in life. That's my main motivation. I like people relating and, and seeing like aspects of family and lifestyle that are, are, are like you don't get to see often. And I feel like when I was coming up, it was so saturated with beauty. It was so saturated with everything looking perfect and the bodies and the and the makeup and stuff. So like I kind of got turned off of that, even though I do do that. Like I get ready, of course, and like I have my makeup done today, even though I'm kind of sweating it off a little bit. But I don't know, like that wasn't my main thing. And I do do that here and there. And I should probably do some more because people ask me about it. But well, how do you how do you not do that, but still manage to like go to to walk the red carpet at Cam's Film Festival with Fenty and like work with beauty, like other beauty brands, like I think you've worked with Kiehl's here that does like facial stuff. and Yeah, like, because I think like those companies resonate with what real beauty is, not the traditional beauty of like you have to be done up, you have to, it, like beauty is inner beauty. It's not like back in the day, you have to just look perfect. You always have to show products and blah, blah, blah. I'm just more lifestyle, more more subtle about it. And I think like people are attracted to, yes, outer beauty, but also inner beauty. Like if you're ugly on the inside, and you're hideous on the inside, and you suck on the inside, like, it's, 
it, it's not attractive, you know? I know I know one of the things that has frustrated you since coming to Dubai is like because we talk about it like obviously I'm an entrepreneur I push I try to push you into more entrepreneurial endeavors and stuff like that and kind of control your own destiny when it comes to what yeah. you've built and you get frustrated with the amount of people that message you or your assistant and like brands right and then the amount of brands that actually want to pay for using you right so let's let's talk about like the business side like i know people are watching this are obviously like they like you they're fans but i'm sure they're not ignorant they understand what social media does yeah social media is all about i'll tell you how it works instagram wants you to use instagram because the more people on active users they have on instagrams the more people like my companies will spend more money on ads mm. right so if you don't Pay for the product, you are the product. True. Period. Okay? So that's that's what it is. If you don't pay for a service or the product, you are the product. Now, what that means is basically the more people Instagram has on the platform, the more they can charge for ad space. Right? And that's just that's just what it is. Now, you, how many followers do you have on Instagram? I have 1.6 million. Babies. A real, a real 1.6 million. <laughs> Yeah. So I, we we've obviously you know since moving to Dubai we see that a lot of content creators have fake fake followers, and you can tell by the engagement rate. Like the engagement rate is sub point zero one. Like it's not it's not even it's, it's not even fakeable anymore. Mm. And I think what what happens is you've 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 taken your time. You spent years creating content. I, I wish. One day, maybe I'll show a, a, a story blog behind the, behind the scenes of what you do to create a video and what goes into it because you'll meticulously shoot it. You'll come up with the idea. You'll meticulously shoot it. And then you may sit it down for a couple of days and then you come back and you edit all from your phone yeah, like for hours and critiquing this one. And then she has a family chat group where she'll send it out and be like, what do you guys think? And this family member will say this, and this family member will say this, and then she'll go back to edit it, and you don't then have to air it out a lot. Yeah, but I'm just you telling really you, it's a, lot. It's, okay. a <laughs> it's a it's a lot that goes into doing it. But you actually genuinely care about making people laugh, so you want to make sure the video is good. You have to have a standard. Like I don't know, I don't like to post like anything, anytime, any day. You know what I mean? So I like to work hard on my video, and then I have a standard for myself. I I go hard on myself, and then I also have like a small circle of people which is my family or, or friends. And I send them the video like, hey. And it's also good. Like sometimes you're in it so much. Like you said it, like I shoot it, that um, I leave it for a few days. Sometimes I'm editing it for two days or three days. And then, you know, you get lost in the sauce sometimes. So like mm -hmm. it's good to have like outside opinions on, like from people you trust because then they can look at the content and be like, no, take this out. This is offensive. Like how could you? Yeah. Oh, and you don't even notice things that, or like wrong or bad or whatever, and and then they, and then they also encourage you like when it's good, it's like yo, it's amazing, post it. Then I'm like my trust is up. I'm like oh yes, <laughs> you know what I mean. And then I post it, and then you move on to the next thing. With 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 that whole little lesson I just gave about creating the content, you've been able to get 1.6 million followers. On a typical month, you'll re on a typical month you'll reach 30 million unique accounts. Like Instagram tells you. Yeah. Right, uh, your story views are crazy. Like I watch it, and your engagement is extremely high. It's it's more than five times the average engagement amount that most people get, and that's because your content is your content. There's you're not promoting a brand every single post or every other post, and I think that you you actually care about it. And then we have staff. You have an assistant. I have a full time editor. We just hired another full time editor. You had a full time editor before that you've yeah. recently had to finding a new one and stuff like that. And we have staff, we have web staff, we have writers. Like we have these people on our staff that we pay. Our payroll is, I mean, my payroll on the content side that you share as well is, is, is like fifteen, eighteen thousand dollars $18,000 a month. Yeah, it's right? no joke. Yeah, so people like understand that there's a true business behind creating this stuff. And so, like, where you get frustrated is a lot of brands hit you up. They want the genuine content that you do. And you've had some great partnerships. When we lived in America, you had awesome partnerships. You've even had awesome partnerships here so far, too. They're a little bit less and far in between. But these, these brands hit you up, want X, Y, and Z, and then tell you they don't have a budget. 
Like for you. Okay, this is where I'm going to get pissed off because <laughs> the passion runs deep. Okay, like when I started off, obviously it was like a hobby and I didn't know what it was going to become. And then I quit my job. Like this was all I put my energy into and it became a business and a lifestyle. So like it was normal to be, be a business. Like mm -hmm. when companies approach you, it would come from an ad sense where they're like, we want this certain amount CPMs. of CPMs. CPM cost per mil, yeah. Yes, and they wanted this amount of views on uh, on their product or on their services, and so it was a business. And like nobody would approach you and say, "Here, here is a, here is a ticket. Go show it to everybody." Like it's not a it's not like a flimsy thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think like here coming here, it was a bit of a transition because, <sighs> damn, um, like it's a bit of a transition because I feel like the word influencer has a negative connotation when it comes to business. Like they don't take it seriously as a business for, for most people. Yeah. And I think fame is really a lot of like the end goal for a lot of influencers. So they don't take it seriously either. And they're just like, they just need enough money to pay rent. They just take anything. You know what I'm saying? How many brands a month hit you up? A true number. I will say 10 to 15. And these are like, Brands like legit, like not legit, spam. Like like multi million dollar, billion dollar brands. Yeah, I know you've turned down just in last month. I've, you've turned down four multi billion dollar companies yeah. because they said they didn't have a budget, which is ridiculous. So then, like coming here as well, like you know, I'm very excited. I feel like it's an untapped market, but then you're also like hitting a market that's like, I don't know. I feel like it's behind a bit I when think, it comes to influencer marketing. I think there's a, there's two people, right? So I, a lot of people don't know I come from the world of marketing, right? I come from working at a traditional marketing agency back in the days, right? And this is when influencers were kind of just right on its rise, like it was a thing. Mm. And the job is you have a client, then you have an agency, and typically there's another agency, and then there's the actual procurement agency that's going to do the work, and then there's the influencer. Mm. So by the time the cell phone company comes up with this budget, marketing budget, a certain amount is allocated towards, you know, online media spend and development. And then that that is given to the marketing company which bids on it. They take a percentage. And then it goes to the marketing division that deals with influencers. Mm. And their job is to give the influencer as little money as possible because they get to keep as much money as possible. Makes sense. Right? And then the influencer, they go, they have A, B, and C, and D based. A, B, and C influencers. And the A is who they want to work with, but they want to find the A that they want to work with that doesn't want money or doesn't demand money. So no negotiation. So yeah, they're like, it's easy. Yeah. And then they got the C ones that will just take a free product and a video might hit 250,000 people or plays and they just happy showing off this product to say that they work. No, with because there's also like the influencers will be like, oh my God, this is a big brand. This will help me. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. you don't know that you're working for free because it's like your audience that you work hard for will see their product, will buy their product and they're making money and you're putting in the effort but not making anything. I'll, I'm going to get real nerdy real quick. So. Okay. Media is just essentially changed. The media, it goes after attention. So you start off with like the newspaper, the radio, television, and then TV, and then like even develop like streaming services they call OTT, right? Over the top services. And so the, the evolution of media has changed to where it goes into different platforms, right? And it's just like, like if somebody was here doing a traditional podcast, your podcast would have so many views. If you have a monthly average viewership, the, 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 the buyer, the media buyer, knows how much the CPM is. It's cost per million, but really means cost per 1,000. Mm. So for every 1,000 listeners or every 1,000 views you get, you get paid a certain amount. I know this because on YouTube, I would make like a quarter million dollars a year, right? And so YouTube pays pretty well in certain niches. On Mine was a real estate niche, right? Radio, TV, magazines, print, all these, they all charge per subscriber, right, or per a viewer mm -hmm. right and so for example to run a super bowl commercial that's going to reach i think it's 30 million people or so it's seven million dollars for 30 30 seconds now let's not compare social media to the super bowl because it's one of the biggest events in the world right yeah but the point is let's talk about like ott services right so over the top these are your hulus your netflixes 
so on and so forth. Most of them charge somewhere between like, like uh, I think it's between $25 and $75 per CPM. So for every thousand views you get, you get somewhere between 20, you're going to pay somewhere between $25 and $75 per those views. Mm-hmm. Right. And so you take an average. And so don't think Netflix is out here spending millions of dollars creating TV shows just so you can pay your subscription. Like there is there is models on Hulu where you have no ads and you have ads. Yeah. And the ads just on traditional TV, whether you're watching Suits or whether you're watching whatever TV show it is, these commercials is what where the actual revenue comes from. So they'll buy a TV show for millions of dollars. They'll spend ten million dollars developing a show every episode. So let's boil just let's compare OTT to social media, right? So like your streaming services and social media. These are the true media aspects that can tell you exactly how many people watch this ad because they have the technology built into the platform, right? They know how many people watched the Game of Thrones reruns and they can put ads in there if they want to or you pay an extra money, right? So what happens is influencers don't know this material. The media company knows because anytime they call a billboard company, anytime they call the radio company. They don't com- negotiate. They don't say, oh, I want to give you some product here. Put, can never. you put my, my brand on this billboard for free? Like they never do that. If you want a billboard on Sheikh Zayed Road here in Dubai, they're going to tell you how many cars go up and down Sheikh Zayed Road every single day. And they do it for the month. I'm pretty sure there's like a month or two month, three month long contract. And they're going to give you a price and say, do you want it or Period. do you not? Period. Which so one? what happens is you're paying for the suspected eyeballs that are potentially going to hit. Now, if I drive down Sheikh's Eye Road, that doesn't mean I look at that billboard. But as big as the billboards are in Dubai, it's a high chance, right? But <laughs> the point is, the point is, you're paying for the opportunity for somebody. So, so it's not even truly that somebody saw it. They're just saying, this is how many millions or hundred thousands of cars go down Sheikh's Eye Road every day. An actual ad or video that you have to produce that you have to pay a videographer, you got to pay Tony, you got to pay the editor, you got to pay these people to do these videos. To, for you to do that video, you can actually say, hey, your video got 3 million plays, the engagement was at 2.5 or 7%, right? Mm-hmm. And it's in a niche of technology or finance or real estate, here's what it costs. And so typically you have a CPM, and this is for you creators out there, any creators that want to know what your value is, you typically want to do a CPM and I'll maybe I'll you follow me and you can see what it is a CPM and then you have multipliers. These multipliers are what type of content? Is it video, picture? Videos cost more because they pr- cost more to produce. And then you have niche, depends what type of niche the person's coming to you from or your content's in. And then you have a engagement multiplier. Mm. And then your base CPM times these multipliers is what gives you what your CPM cost should be. So anytime that these brands reach out to you and they don't have a budget, tell them they shouldn't be in business. Yeah, and I feel like it's just an excuse. Because if you it's just an excuse. If you have to end up taking more and more brand deals, which alhamdulillah, we don't need to, we're financially secure, that these brand deals will water down your content and your audience won't trust you and you'll walk away. So your audience is like your baby. It's like your baby, you grow it, you care so much about it, and then, you know... I think like when it comes to working with brands, I'm very, very picky and you have to pick uh, a brand that wants to create a true relationship with you that's beneficial and like also aligns with the type of content you do. Like I always say, don't get excited if the biggest brand in the world hits you up, but they offer you nothing. Don't get excited. Like Especially I, when they say to build a relationship. Yeah, there's a few there's a few tricks. Like first they'll be <laughs> like, yeah, just do this and like you'll build a relationship. So I used to like work with really really big companies and they'd tell me that in the beginning and I'd work with them and it'd be a year two years like you know you have to learn so after a while I'm like how long is this this is the longest relationship I'm not even married for two years this relationship is longer than my marriage and I still haven't seen the fruits of my labor so like I just noticed that like they say things to charm people and it like really frustrates me because I feel like a lot of people are taken advantage of and they feel like they're they're getting blessed, but it's not It's not that the case. Big companies will be like, let's meet in person. We have this, blah, blah, blah. And it'll align with my journey. And I meet up and they want me to sign away my rights for a long period of time where I can't like... Exclusivity. And stuff yeah, like they that. want to sign. They want me to sign exclusivity. They don't want me to 
market for other companies that would pay me my rate. Yeah. And then uh, what do they offer in return? Free product. Are you ki- Let me pay the bills with free product out here. I think we look, look, look you know, we don't have we don't have any problem buying flights. We don't have any problem buying food. We don't have any problem staying at hotels. We don't have any I don't we don't need any of those things for free. I don't Just, want freebies. Yeah, this freebies are not for us. Listen, when I was 2 years ago, when I was, you know, up until 2 years ago, I used to do it every weekend I was at some convention speaking and people knew right away because my rule was my price was my price. I only speak for 25 the, the minimum was $25,000. Mm. You I get 90 minutes in the building, 45 minutes on stage. Don't call me if you don't have it. And that was two years ago. So my numbers now are different. Do you want to say a number? Yes. You do? Should I? I don't know. It's up to you. I'm asking you. It's your business. Well, yeah. I'll do a minimum post for 25000 as well. It's the minimum. But it's more. you're more into... But I'm not just taking a picture... Like it's it's obviously work, but like my minimum is twenty five thousand. Creating to work with a brand, period. To work with a brand. Yeah. Yeah. Why would you copy my number? Because no, it's not copying. We're just meant to be. We're on the same wavelength, Habibi. So it's obvious <laughs> that, I mean, you made the announcement. We made the announcement. You're pregnant. You're moving into this new era. Wait, let me see if I have anything else to vent about. No. No, that's it. I think I'm good. Right. Mm-hmm. Yes. It was a nerd it was a nerd session. It was very nerdy, but I think it's very necessary because the education is lacking out here and I think not here, I think everywhere. Yeah, not just here. I, I think it's lacking everywhere and it's like a frustration. Like Dubai is so full of opportunities and jobs and it's just like these it, it just I will say one thing. Brands don't stop working with these middlemen. If you truly want to develop relationship with creators who trust you hire somebody internally in your staff that is going to take care of this aspect of your business because it's just as important as having an ad buyer, just as important as having anybody that's full-time on your marketing team is somebody that you can trust to go out and build relationships with creators because there are some things that creators will do just because they like you. And so stop using these middle agencies that will that ju- that you're paying for their their office rent and the owner's car and the money's not going to the actual creator which is going to give you more eyeballs on your product or service preach so motherhood we're now venturing into another yes okay we're, we're venturing to another part of our life which is parenting uh, uh, becoming parents yeah i'm scared and excited all okay, at the same so time people are wondering if this was like planned or not <laughs> i don't know how you <laughs> but I, I had like planned. I don't know if it was planned. We're married. I, yeah, we're married. That's a good point. I, I think we we had a plan of waiting a year. Yeah. So we accomplished that, and then yeah, and then we were just chilling about it. Honestly, like we're like whatever God wants, we're cool with. And so yeah, I mean like I don't think we knew. When when I took the test, I didn't think we knew or not, obviously, yeah. but it was crazy. I just think it's like a new chapter. It's very exciting. I'm very lost because I'm a first time mom, so I'm you have like to go to these classes and stuff. I need to go to classes. I need to learn about how to even change. I've never changed a diaper in my life, okay? And I shouldn't be proud. Time is ticking, darling. You got about eighty something days left. <laughs> Changed. I've never seen someone else's poop in my life. I don't know how to feel. <laughs> but um but yeah, it's very exciting and I think it's cool. I think like you get a lot of love and praise from people, so it's just I feel good. Like how has it been like pregnancy wise, how yeah. I feel? You know, I don't wanna alhamdulillah, like I don't know if it's because it's first time or a boy or like genetics, but I've been feeling amazing. Yeah. I haven't gotten that nausea. Yeah, you didn't have the um, morning sickness, which is amazing. You haven't yeah. had cravings that people were saying their wives usually ask them to do. I would be pissed because I'd hear stories of like wives sending their husband to Timbuktu to get like a piece of candy. And I'm over here looking at Max. I'm like, I don't ask you for nothing. I live in Dubai. You're <laughs> going to be asking Talibat, not me. <laughs> He tells me to order off a nap, but like I want him to like suffer a little bit, you know, with the cravings. 
But I have been really chill, very energetic. Um, nothing, nothing crazy, to be honest. Yeah. It's like it's it's been a good, smooth ride. And I feel bad saying it out loud because I hear so many different stories of like nausea and yeah. and pain. <sighs> I'm most excited about seeing what our baby looks like and how you're going to be like as a dad. That's crazy to say. It's like another level of hotness as well. It's like, wow. And then, okay, like an, uh, another thing is like that I'm grateful for is people can't stand their partners during pregnancy. They can't stand them. They can't stand the smell yeah. of them. They can't stand the look of them. Like there's something going on. I'm like the opposite. Yeah, you are. Let me take a little whiff. Crazy. <laughs> but I, I think it's... <laughs> I think overall it's been it's it's been a cool journey. What about I mean, you? How do you feel as as I, I'm uh, scared and excited. Like what are you I'm, scared about? There's this little thing, the little human that's gonna be reliant on us for the for the, every single move for a very long time, foreseeable future. Yeah. Um so you know, it's just a new it's a new it's a new thing. It's a new thing that you know, our life changes just a little bit more once again. Yeah. And we're like we're all about the changes. And I think I think this is separate, but I think our baby is going to look like you, but he's going to have my eyes. Thank God. Do you because come up my with eyes are like what pulls people into me. Yeah. Look into my eyes. Look, look, look. You know what I mean? That's that's what um, I foresee. But yeah, we, we need to How do you come up, up with this? It's true. It comes from the heart. Okay. And then we need to set up a baby room. You need to get, you All need these to, get to going. Baby room, baby clothes, stroller. Yeah. The oh, I'm not bougie, but I want my stroller to be bougie. Well, I think I think everybody when they have their first kid, they're like they want the best, and I think mm. kid two gets the the the, the, the leftover the, the, the hand me downs because you're like, oh yeah, we're over it. Kid two's coming. Kid three gets absolutely nothing. <laughs> so you know, we'll we'll see what happens. We're excited about it. We'll obviously get the cool stroller that we think is cool. Yeah. But I know I I we don't we don't we haven't necessarily picked a name yet. We know it's a boy. Um, we're like 80% sure about a name yeah. that we love. And um, Max is excited to have a little shadow and teach him business and talk about CPMs and returns on and stuff in business and oh, real estate. Wow. And so that's cool. Like somebody you can really trust in your son. Very so cool. I, this is, I think that this is a good part to like say goodbye because I think we've. This I think the next time you may hear from us, there may be a baby here. <gasps> I think because well, listen, you're essentially two months away. Yeah. I'm um, due like the end of December. Yeah, end of December. So like a little bit more than two months, and we still got a lot of prepping to do, a lot of things to do, and who knows? Get ready. Get ready. Get ready to wake up in the middle of the night. Get ready to be. Is there a YouTube video for this stuff? <laughs> So no, follow us on social because we're probably going to be going to these par parenting classes. Yeah, we're going to do parenting classes. I'm forcing him to do a mom. You don't have to force me. I think I actually want to learn a little really? bit. Really? Yeah. I know, okay. I know. I know some stuff, but don't make it boring. Okay. Well, don't worry. I'll be there. It won't be boring if I'm there. Um, yeah. So we're excited. We we share a lot of like fun stuff on our journey on our socials. So follow us there. And yeah, I hope we answered like and checked in with everybody. This was awesome. I feel like. I cried like th hmm. 10 minutes in. It's okay. <laughs> it was emotional and it was deep. And I love you guys. Okay, end it. End, end it. it. All right, guys, listen, we're going to put this on. Obviously, you're watching this on our YouTube channel. We're going to probably try to post here more often as we have more established life now in Dubai and we got people working with us. And maybe we may introduce our son to the world here first. I don't know. We haven't even talked about that. Maybe we don't even ever introduce our son to the yeah, world. Yeah, I don't know. That's... So it's, um, who knows? We don't know what happens, but I appreciate you guys tuning in. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, the like button, turn on notifications. Every button you see, except the dislike, <laughs> press it on the screen. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching this and until next time. We're out. Thanks. Mm -hmm.